Hi everyone, my name is Prayag Venkat. I'm a graduate student at Harvard. Today I'm going to tell you about a fast spectral algorithm for mean estimation with sub Gaussian weights. This is joint work with Jishan Lei and Kyle Lu, who are at Harvard, and Fred Zhang, who's at UC Berkeley. So the setup is as follows We're given NIID copies of a random vector x in RD, which has mean mu and covariance sigma. Here I'm only assuming existence of two moments. I don't want to make any stronger assumptions. And the desired output is an estimate mu hat of the true mean mu. Our goal here is to show that for any failure to probability delta, the probability that mu hat minus mu in two norm is larger than R delta, this probability is at most delta. And we want to achieve this kind of guarantee for the smallest confidence radius R delta possible. So here, R delta will depend on things like the sample size n, the dimension d, the failure probability delta, and potentially the covariance matrix of x. So very natural question is, why not just take the empirical mean? That is, we just average the n samples as our estimate. So if we make the strong assumption that original random vector x is multivariate Gaussian with mean mu covariance sigma, and it can be shown that with probability at least one minus delta, the radius achieved by the empirical mean is displayed as follows. It involves a one over square root of n rate broken up into two terms. The first is a dimension dependent term, which involves a trace of sigma, the covariance matrix, it's a second term, which is sort of dimension independent, which only involves the operator norm of, co of the covariance matrix sigma and log one over the failure probability. So it can be shown that this rate is optimal up to constants. And throughout this talk, I'm going to define this radius to be what the sub Gaussian radius or the sub Gaussian rate. And an estimator which achieves this kind of performance will be said to. Uh, achieve sub-Gaussian performance. So one issue here is that this Gaussianity assumption is very strong. So we'd like to somehow relax it. In particular, we'd like to relax it all the way down to only an assumption on the existence of two moments. So if we only make this weaker assumption, this weaker heavy-tailed, potentially heavy-tailed assumption, then by Chebyshev's inequality, one can show that the empirical mean will only achieve this weaker radius displayed at the bottom. So here, it's, the dependence is exponentially worse in terms of one over delta. And the dimension dependent part, the trace sigma part, is multiplying the delta part. So the question here is, assuming only two moments, can we design an estimator which achieves sub Gaussian performance? So in the special case of one dimension, this has been rediscovered multiple times in the literature. The so-called median of means estimator indeed achieves sub-Gaussian performance under only assumption of two moments. So the algorithm works as follows. We basically bucket the data into k disjoint groups. So k will be proportional to log one over delta. Once we partition the data into groups, the end samples into groups of equal size, we compute the means within each group. So I'm going to call these throughout the talk Z1 to ZK. So these bucket means Z1 to ZK are then collected, and the final estimate is simply the median of these K bucket means. So very natural question is, can we do this for dimension bigger than one? So step one is well-defined in high dimensions, but step two for step two, it's not so clear what we mean by median. There are more multiple potential definitions of a median in higher dimension. So the key challenge is how to define this median to give a good estimator. So Minsker in 2015 showed that if you choose the geometric median and you plug it into the median of means framework, then the radius improves significantly. In particular, we achieve the Minsker achieves the correct dependence on log one on one over the failure problem. So he gets the correct log one over delta instead of the previous one over delta. However, we still have the trace sigma term multiplying the delta term. So this is not quite sub Gaussian performance here. So as an aside, one favorable property of this estimator is that the geometric median can actually be computed very quickly. 
So a few years later, Lugosi and Mendelssohn came up with some other definition of high-dimensional median, which does lead to an estimator with sub gaussian performance. Unfortunately, this estimator is computationally inefficient. In particular, a naive computation of it would require exponential in D amount of running time. So in order to address this issue, Hopkins designed an algorithm based on the sum of square semi-definite programming hierarchy to achieve a sub-Gaussian rate in time polynomial and N and D. So here the polynomial running time is something like N to some large unspecified constant. So Chair Panam, Jerry et al. in follow-up work used some kind of gradient descent plus a small semi-definite program that sort of appeared as a subroutine in this Hopkins paper to achieve an improved running time of roughly N to the fourth. So our main contribution is to achieve near linear running time of n squared times d. So here are the input sizes of, you know, we have n samples. Each sample is a d-dimensional vector. So our running time is roughly n times the input size. And this is concurrently achieved by Depersine and LeCue. So here's our main theorem statement. The full details are in the paper. The main takeaway is just that we achieve the, we, we design an algorithm which achieves the sub-Gaussian performance, possibly with some worse constant in front. And our running time is order n times d plus roughly k squared times d. So k here is the number of buckets, which is always at most n. So what, is, what are the main you know, takeaways of this work? So one is that our algorithm is spectral in the sense that it only requires computation of the top eigenvector of a certain matrix. So this sort of adds to a growing body of work on extracting fast algorithms, rather in particular fast spectral algorithms, from sum of squares based algorithms. Second contribution is that the tools that we introduce could potentially be applicable to other high dimensional statistics problems which might exhibit these kind of statistical to computational gaps. And third, our algorithm is very simple. So it is actually possible to implement this algorithm, which is in contrast with semi-definite programming-based algorithms. So now I'm going to go over the previous algorithm and then describe how we improve the running time of, of the past work. So let's consider the simpler question of, suppose that we were just given a guess x of the true mean mu. How would we certify that this guess x is far from the true mean. So one thing we can do is solve the following maximization problem. So this maximization has um, optimization variables u being a unit vector, b being an indicator vector of our bucket means, and r being a scalar radius. So here, this optimization problem is searching for a unit direction u so that Along the direction u, when I project the bucket means zi, and I project my guess x, the guess x is far away from 90% of the bucket means along the direction u. And by far away, we, we quantify it by this variable r. So it's not clear that we can solve this efficiently, but suppose for a moment that we could solve this problem. We can then turn this into a full algorithm as follows. We'll iteratively update our solution. So we'll start with a guess, an initial guess, x1. We update it to x2, x3, and so on. At each iteration t, we're going to solve this inner maximization problem to get a radius rt and a unit vector ut. And we're going to basically take a gradient step in that direction. So how do we analyze this, this algorithm? Cherupanam Jerry et al. showed that basically this unit vector ut, it's correlated with the direction of mu minus xt. So this is exactly the direction that tells us how to improve our guess. So mu to, in some sense, ut is a noisy estimate of this direction in which we want to move. And this radius rt can be shown to be a good estimate of the distance from our guess xt to the true mean u. So then the analysis proceeds by case work. So if our guess xt is close to mu, 
and we're done. We can just check this by looking at the value of RT. On the other hand, if XT is very far away from the true mean, then it can be shown that the distance between mu and XT plus one is a constant factor smaller, constant multiplicative factor smaller than the distance between mu and XT. So if we iterate this procedure a few times, then XT will converge to mu at a geometric rate. Moreover, they show that you can replace this you know, maximization problem by its semi-definite programming relaxation. This is something which can be solved in polynomial time, and the same sort of analysis carries through. So in order to get a faster algorithm, our main contribution is to show how to do without this semi-definite program. In particular, we'll design essentially an direct approximate solver for this inner maximization problem. So our main step is to simplify the problem to this, simplify this inner maximization problem to what's called the furthest hyperplane problem. So in this problem, which was studied by Karni et al. in 2012 in a different context, we're basically given k points, c1 to zk, and we want to search for a separating hyperplane u, which is a unit vector, which has large margin theta for all of the points z1 to z2. So that's represented here by this optimization problem. So we show that it suffices to, to design a bicriteria approximation algorithm for the simpler problem. So by a bicriteria approximation algorithm, I mean an algorithm which produces an approximate solution in two senses. One, it does not achieve the optimal theta. Rather, rather it only produces a solution which achieves a theta, something smaller than theta by a constant multiplicative factor. And the second sense in which it's approximate is that we don't require it to produce a completely feasible solution. Rather, we only require that it produces a solution which satisfies a constant fraction of these k constraints. So now I'm going to discuss how do we actually solve this for this hyperplane problem. So in our particular application, unfortunately, this for this hyperplane instance problem, this for this hyperplane problem instance may not actually admit a feasible solution to begin with. So this immediately breaks the algorithm of Karnin et al. So this is where we have to introduce some new ideas. So we can only show that there exists a solution, theta star u star, which satisfies 90% of the constraints. So using this um, hundredth is much weaker assumption, we were able to design a multiplicative weights update style algorithm, which iteratively will find a bicriteria approximate solution. So it turns out that we we're able to rely on some existing machinery um, due to Barak et al. and Aurora et al. And this is how we avoid having to directly solve the semi-definite program. Instead of solving the semi-definite program, we we're able to design just some simple iterative algorithm. So in short, the, our, the, the summary of this work is that we build on Cherapanam Jerry et al's algorithm by searching for descent directions. To find these descent directions, we solve this simpler for this hyperplane hyper hyper problem in a bicriteria sense. And we solve it by some simple multiplicative weights update procedure. We can use a regret-based analysis to show that we need a small number of uh, re-weighting um, iterations. And each iteration only takes order of k times d time because we just require computation of a top eigenvector. So there are several interesting future directions. One is to study the problem of covariance estimation under heavy tails. Uh, the second interesting question is to actually implement our algorithm and see what kind of you know, practical implications there are. And finally, it would be of interest to study whether these algorithms are relevant for other classical statistical problems under more modern constraints. Thank you, and I'm happy to take any questions offline.